we're back. Temple women's basketball, oh, we're back. Temple men's basketball, we're back. Oh, AC, what's up, man? What's up, right? Yeah, I was a meme night, so I have some memes, because we're back. Wait, we got one other person, too. We're back, but first, let's take a time out. Welcome back everyone, did you miss us? Temple Timeout has returned for a brand new semester of Temple sports coverage. That is Adam Miller, I am Brian Steinmetz, and of course we have a lot on deck for you today. But first, Adam, how was your winter break, brother? Well, while the weather outside was frightful, my break was just delightful. I got to see friends, family, but I missed my Temple Timeout family, so I'm glad to be back to catch up on how the men's and the women's basketball season's shaken out. Absolutely. While we were on a break, ah, <laughs> friends. Yeah, friends, overrated. I'm glad it's off Netflix. The men's and women's team were busy. For, uh, for the men, things didn't necessarily go their way. But for the women, all systems were a go, especially last night. There are some congratulations in order as the women beat the Penn Quakers to win a share of the Big Five title with Villanova. Yeah, and let's start this breakdown off by giving some love to the Lady Owls. I'll be honest, I didn't know what to expect from the team, but they are balling right now, winning five of their last six games highlighted by a big time win against USF and for those who think that they're just reaping the rewards of playing in a non-power five conference just know that they only lost number six South Carolina by seven points mm. the Owls now sit at third in the AAC standings and maybe headed for some March madness but first they need to turn their attention to Penn who they took on last night yeah big game for the Owls as the Quakers came to Pearson McGonigal this is a big game for Temple to get a share of the big five title but it didn't start off the way they wanted to they found themselves flat down by 11 at half and you can see the Owls, they start shipping away. Yeah, and Ashley Jones took out a big chunk of that with two clutch back-to-back -back three balls. Good ball movement here. Here's the first. She sinks that. And here comes the second with no hesitation. Step back, pull up, bang. No hesitation. Back no. to back. And who's that stick in their hand in the cookie jar? Thin mints, peanut butter patties, shortcakes. You <laughs> betcha. The Owls are eating good. In the guts of the game here, Mia Davis says, Waiter, I'll take the check, please. That'll do it as the Owls win this one 76 to 72. And you know, it's kind of funny, Adam, because in the preseason, we thought the girls' team might, might disappoint and the boys' team would ball out. But it's been kind of the reverse of that, with the team losing four of its last five games, yeah. with their only win coming against number 16, Wichita State. Adam, I'm confused. Yeah, they're more hot and cold than Kesha. Mm. Overall, they've been as cold as ice. But here's the good news. They had a game the other night <laughs> against Cincinnati. Let's take a look at how that went down. Yeah, one thing's for sure. The Owls, they got everything they wanted offensively. Hamilton, he's going to get two here. But Quinn Rose, he led the way for the Owls. Here's two of his 26 on the night. But let's not forget about NPL. Nate Pierre-Louis, who had a career-high 22 points on the night. And Temple's doing everything they can to keep stride with the Bearcats in the second half. Alani Moore getting in on the action. Behind the arc here. And the fans, they're loving it. They're loving the resilient effort from the Owls. But in the end, Jared Cumberland, he's going to be way too much. He drops this one. And the Owls, they drop it. 89 to 82. That Jaron Cumberland's quite the player. He's a nasty guy. This loss drops the Owls to one and five in their last six games, and their tournament hopes are are dwindling away as the season goes on. But as you know, it was meme night at the Leah Core Center, and the team in the stadium had all the jokes. Lucky for us, we had our sports desk reporter Alex Call to cover the action, and he's here to break it all down for us. Hey, Alex. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Doing Happy well. to be here finally. Um, but so we were hoping the Owls would have made a meme of the Bearcats. Um, which obviously didn't happen, but for the fans, they definitely did win um, because the Leah Core Center was electric. Uh, there you go, as you see on the Megatron, Olaf calling out the <laughs> band, having a good time. But the cool thing about Meme Night actually was the first 1,000 fans, there's a Friends reference. There you yeah, go, there Brian. First 1,000 fans actually were handed a Baby Yoda poster to hang up in their room instead of a usual t shirt um, as that craze continues all over social media. There's the baby Yoda poster there right there. There it is, yeah. There it is, yeah. Definitely great scene in the Leah Core Center. 
Loud noises, of course. So, Alex, I gotta know, uh, you were there the whole night. What was your favorite meme? Oh, my favorite meme? Yeah. Probably the Baby Yoda. I'm gonna go ahead with that because of the Timberland boots and the hat. <laughs> okay. Uh, made it for me. What about you, really? Brian? Did you, know, you have I, any favorites? I, speaking of the Baby Yoda poster, yeah. I, I saw a tweet from the Cherry Crusade that mm. said the first 1,000 fans are getting Baby Yoda posters. Okay. I was kind of disappointed. I thought it was going to be a big, a big post so you can hang up on your wall. It was like a little, it was like about the size of this paper. paper. It was. And, and my, my roommate Kyle said to me, he's like, what, they go print these out at the tech or something? Yeah, really. I thought, I thought How that many was, do you have? How many I did thought, you get? I, not going to lie, I did take about five or six. Okay, so you can put them all together. And make <laughs> I could put them all there together to make a big one. But I, I do like the, the Disney, the Instagram filter. Right. I love that. I thought that was yeah. pretty funny. Yeah. For sure. I have about five of those Baby Yoda pictures actually hanging on my wall right now. <laughs> there you go. Cute guy. All right, Alex. Well, thank you for coming on. I'm so happy you found some fun on Meat Knife. From the court to the mat, it's time to talk about some gymnastics. Yeah, record-breaking home opener took place this Saturday for the women's gymnastics team. The Owls took on Southern Connecticut State University in Cortland in a tri-meet at McGonagall Hall. The Owls brought home a first place win to the whopping score of 190, 190.675. Temple updates Aaliyah Mayo was there to catch up on all the action. Check it out. It's home opener and Temple Women's Gymnastics is thinking pink. In this tri meet against Cortland and Southern Connecticut University, the girls have already started off this meet with a bang. Saturday's home opener at McGonagall Hall was a historic meet for sophomore Ariana Castrance. The all-around gymnast broke the Temple Gymnastics all-around record with a score of 39.275. I was just trying to focus on each event and not really think about the big picture until, you know, I'm finished with what was right in front of me. But afterwards, then we can, we can settle in what we did. The team faced some unexpected obstacles prior to meet day, leaving head coach Josh Nielsen with less gymnasts than anticipated. So we got hit by the flu bug big time. Uh, we had a third of the girls on the team taking flu medicine all week. So, I mean, they did a great job considering. Despite the influenza virus making an unexpected appearance, five of the team's all-around gymnasts placed top three in the entire meet. Even when people are down or not, you know, where they should be, is that we still have enough depth on our team that we can work with it, and we can still come out here and perform and do our jobs. Despite some minor setbacks this week, the Temple University women's gymnastics team finished strong with a first place score of 190.675 against Cortland and Southern Connecticut University. These ladies are set to take on the University of New Hampshire and West Virginia University next week at West Virginia University. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Aaliyah Mayo. Hey, thanks, Aaliyah. Now, Brian, usually we reserve this time for either Miller's Killers or Stein's Lines, but we need to talk about former Ke Temple coach Manny Diaz oh. poaching Temple's most dominant defensive player. That's right. Miami head coach Manny Diaz landed 2019 AAC Defensive Player of the Year Quincy Roche. Last season, was Ro last season Roche was a one-man wrecking crew racking up, count them, not 11 or 12, 13 sacks. But Diaz didn't stop fishing in the AAC transfer pool, nabbing former Houston quarterback De'Ara King. Mm. For those who don't know, King was among the early candidates for the Heisman Trophy before the start of last season. Yeah, he certainly wasn't. But listen, I mean, we can talk about Manny Diaz as we want, but I want to focus on Temple for this. Mm -hmm. Now, Quincy Roche, he makes three transfers for the Owl. Kenny Bowie, he's taking his talents to Ole Miss. Todd Santeo is, but I'm, I'm getting some breaking news. He is taking a visit to Colorado State University, mm. and yet he hasn't, made it a, he hasn't made a complete decision yet. But add this to the loss of other nine other main contributors to graduation, you got to worry about the state of the team next year. You gotta wonder what's going on with all these transfers, why everyone's leaving. Is something going on behind the scenes? I, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll follow up on that story. Maybe we'll follow up. But, well, at least we know we're not going anywhere in, until graduation, at least. Yeah. But until that time, be sure to continue to follow us on social media at TU underscore Sports Desk. Yeah, we'll be back same time, same place next week for Brian Steinmix, Alex Call, and everybody in the studio. Have a great weekend, everyone.